There are two major alternatives to handle alternate optima. One is flux variable analysis. So to predict the ranges across alternate optima for all fluxes in the system. The second alternative is based on the principle of minimization of enzyme usage, the principle uh, by the cell of minimization of enzyme usage. Now I will talk about this uh, alternative to handle alternate optima. I have a visual example for this. Let's say we have this hypothetical system. If this is the system, glucose comes and there are sets of equations and then a G is formed, metabolite G, which is secreted out. So we have a very simple metabolic network. And if we are given that the rate of glucose uptake rate is five, what is the rate of production of G, secretion of G out? Based on flux balance, mass balance constraints and principle, if this is five, A needs to be balanced, right? Five units of A is consumed, five units of A is produced, so five units of A needs to be consumed, right? Again, based on flux balancing around B, db over dt must be zero. So the rate of these two equations, two rates, sorry, must be equal to each other. Again, if this is five, this needs to be five, and this will be five. So very easy, right? You don't need an optimization for this because uh, there is no alternative paths. If this is five, manually, we were able to solve that uh, the only way secretion rate of G can um, have a value is to have a rate of five units. And this will be the flow of carbon direction. But if this is my metabolic network, I don't have only G, but B is having a branch here to produce F, and F is also secreted outside. So in this case, this is 5. Due to mass balance, this will be also 5. But I don't know which part of 5 will go to this direction, and which part part of 5 will go to this direction, right? It can be 0 to 5. It can be 5 to 0. It can be 2.5 to 2.5, right? There are endless alternatives, and I don't know, I can never know which one is true, given those constraints. But if I am given an objective function, Let's say I was told that this cell uh, is trying to maximize its production of G. This is given to me. Thanks to this objective function, among all those possible solutions that arise because of this branching after B, I can choose the one which will give me the optimum solution for G. So, if five units of glucose is taken up, five units of B will be formed. Yes, there are many alternatives here, but I know that the cell is trying to optimize its G production. So, if I maximize the rate of production of G in my uh, optimization problem. Of course, in order to have a maximum value of G, all five has to go in this direction, right? 
So it should be like this, 5 going to 0 going to D. So in the optimality constraints, this will be 5, this will be 5, this will be 5, this will be 5, this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 0. So by using a single measured value and by using an objective function, I was able to predict all the rates in this system. So this is the power of using uh, objective function. And since you use, if you use you, another objective function, you will get another solution. Or correct, uh, choosing a correct objective function is really important. So far, so good. This scenario where we maximize G, we don't have any flux variability, right? If objective function is maximization of G, in this case, this is the road. And in this road, all the fluxes has to be five. There is no other wave if G is to be produced in five units. But metabolic networks are much more complex than this. Let me add another complexity, this, another complexity to this problem. Let's say this is the metabolic network. So, okay, says biological objective is maximum G production. But in this case, I have two alternative paths to produce G. Glucose can go with this road to G, or it can go via this road to G. Now I will have the problem of flux variability, if this is the uh, metabolic network. Yes, there will be five units of A, and then there will be five units of G, but in this branching, and of course, because of maximality of G, there will be zero F. But in this branching, I will not know how much of B will go to C and how much of B will go to D. So for all of those reactions, I will have a range of zero to five. It can be any value between zero to five. When I apply FVA, I will see that for all those reactions, I don't have a unique value, but the range is between 0 and 5. Here, I was talking about an alternative, another alternative for flux variability. Now I'm introducing it. This is based on a second optimization, a second objective function. So one objective function we have used so far was the maximum G production. If we use a second objective function, we can constrain which of those paths are active. And this is minimum enzyme production. What does it mean? If cell will choose this path, it needs to activate two enzymes, right? In order to produce C or G, the corresponding enzymes needs to be produced. Enzymes are proteins, as you know. So we have a gene, corresponding gene. From the gene, there is mRNA production. From the mRNA, there is this protein production. And that protein will go and catalyze the reaction. And the proteins are made up of amino acids. And the mRNAs are made up of nucleic acids. So, Production of an enzyme means 
production of lots of amino acids, lots of nucleic acids for the cell. The cell is using its resources to make amine, to make an enzyme. So remember, cell is taking those substrates, glucose, etc., and making building blocks from them, right? To make the macromolecules. And the sources are limited. It doesn't use unlimited amount of infinite amount of glucose or other substrates. So given these limited resources, if you focus on those two alternatives, it needs to make two enzymes to make to produce G for the blue road and for the orange road. It needs to make five enzymes active to produce G. So you can safely assume that this will be more burden for the cell to produce five enzymes. So it will need more and more amino acid production and nucleic acid production for the related mRNA, etc. So and it, then it will produce the same amount of G in both roads. The, the cell would, would uh, try to choose the shortest path because it can produce the same amount of G with a less amount of work, right? Using less amount of resource. So, after you run the system with the first biological objective, let's say maximum G production, maximum growth, etc., then you can fix the value of the optimum uh, object, the value of objective function to its optimum value. And in these conditions, let's say you fix it to five, you perform a second objective function to minimize enzyme production and this objective function will choose this path and will eliminate this path you will know that these are zero and these are five so you eliminate the alternate optimal problem by using the second objective function So here, then how would you represent this mathematically, this minimization of enzyme usage? Enzyme amount is correlated with reaction rate. If we have a reaction A goes to B, we have certain rate for this reaction, and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme, so we can safely assume that enzyme amounts are correlated with the fluxes. If you need a higher flux for an enzyme, sorry, for a reaction, a higher reaction rate, then more enzyme will be needed, probably. So more enzyme molecule will need, mean more product. So, if our second optimization is that the cell needs to function with minimum enzyme production, and enzyme production is a burden for the cell, there are three alternative mathematical representation for this objective function, this objective of the cell. And all three are based on this enzyme flux correlation uh, principle. So one is minimization of sum of squares of the internal fluxes. If we need to minimize enzyme usage, we can minimize total fluxes in the system. Lower fluxes will mean lower enzymes. So the cell will try to achieve the same objective function by using minimum flux values. So you can minimize the sum of squares of the 
fluxes. This will minimize the values of fluxes, so you will mimic minimum enzyme production. Or you can minimize the sum of absolute values of the fluxes. I say absolute because some fluxes will be negative. Still, if, even if it is negative, it will the magnitude will show the amount of enzyme, right? So you need to sum the absolute values, not the real values. Or you can minimize the number of active reactions. Let's say in one case there are 100 reactions active. In the other case, there are 50 reactions active and both lead to the optimum value of your objective function. Of course, if 50 reaction is active rather than 100, this means less enzyme will be produced for the um, for that specific case. So this is another mathematical representation for minimum enzyme principle. Uh, the first principle, minimization of uh, sum of squares of the fluxes, is a secondary optimization. Was first used in literature in this research. Uh, so here there is an underdetermined system for a brain metabolic network. We used in this study. Uh, an objective function of maximization of the sum of glutamate, glutamine GABA uh, transport between neurons and astrocytes. And as a secondary optimization to mimic minimum enzyme production, we used uh, sum of squares of fluxes uh, minimization. And then we got, we reported our results. The other one, minimization of some of absolute values of the fluxes as secondary optimization, was reported in 2010, and it is termed in this paper as parsimonious FPA or PFPA. I will just quickly go through the minimization of sum of squares of the internal fluxes. Here, objective function includes square terms. So we cannot use linear programming, but we should use quadratic programming for solution. In MATLAB, there is quad prog function. It is very similar to lean prog in terms of inputs. The only difference is, in addition to F, there is another input, H. H matrix is square matrix. And all the non-diagonal elements are zero in this matrix. And the diagonal elements should be defined as the coefficients of quadratic terms in your objective function. I will cover a very simple example. Let's say your objective function is minimization of V1 square plus V3 square. So this is the objective function. There is no V2 in your objective function and they are both quadratic terms. In this case, this is how sh you should define the H matrix. All non-diagonal elements are zero, and in the diagonal elements, the first one has a coefficient of one, the second one has a coefficient of zero, the third one has a coefficient of 
two. If your objective function includes both linear and non uh, linear and uh, quadratic terms, this time you should define the quadratic terms via h and you should define the linear terms via f in quad proc function. How? So you don't have any linear terms for v1 and v2 in your objective function. Their values will be zero. For v3, you have minus five. For v4, no linear term, zero. And for v5, you have two. So this is this will be your f in your quadratic program. And for h, so I assume that we have five unknowns here. So f will be five by one and h will be a matrix of 5 by 5, n by n. And again, non-diagonal elements are 0. I have v1 square 1. I don't have any square term for v2 and v3 and v5. But for v4, I have a square term of 0 0.03. So there will be 0 0.03 in the position of 4 by 4, 4 to 4. This is how you can use quadratic programming to minimize some of squares of fluxes which mimic minimum amount of enzyme usage by the cell and which offers an alternative to flux variable analysis to handle alternate optima problem. <laughs>